Continental Infantry from militia and riflemen is that these muskets that are military made are designed to have a long, sharp bayonet attached to the end of it. This allows this weapon to not only be a firearm, but ultimately a hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon, a pike to drive off any enemy from the field, that last resort. We hear a lot about uh, ranges in uh, muskets in the 18th century, but ultimately a musket can be as personal as a hand-to-hand -hand combat might be. These men, these men, these muskets on the third line at Calpins engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat driving the British before them with the bayonet. Attention everybody, the about hey. three step forward, three step forward. Now, <laughs> typically a Continental Infantry uh, detachment will, before they ever leave camp, they will load and fo uh, uh, ready their weapons. Um, this is going to allow them to be ready at a moment's notice to engage an enemy, and they often will uh, understand that this is going to be something that's performed as they move out to position. This is what that looks like. Prime and load. Priming and loading procedures are laid down in a manual of exercise written by Baron de Steuben, a <coughs> Russian officer who comes and volunteers for the Continental Army, ultimately becoming Inspector General of the Southern Department here in 1780, moving south with General Nathaniel Green. But prior to this, he had taught the Continental Army their loading and firing procedures, how to be an effective, well-trained, disciplined troop. Again, 15 seconds, hopefully, to load and fire that weapon. <coughs> this becomes the interval by which you mark your life. 15 second intervals. So, it's dire that you're able to perform these maneuvers and exercises with as much alacrity and efficiency as possible, even under the dire circumstances. Section, make, ready. So, A, fire, fire, load. So that initial volley fire allows for the enemy to have a wave of musket shot fly down range towards them. Now, that next 15 seconds starts immediately. And in the third line at the Battle of Calpins, you have volley fire that initially is relatively uh, centralized and impactful. It then becomes more generalized. And these men actually have to redeploy after they've uh, loaded their muskets. Section. Right. March. <laughs> Take care. Halt. Hey. Ready. Take. A. Fuck. As the fighting right. became more generalized, Go. this back and forth between the British ranks and the Continental Army is going to create a slugfest, a battering away, the volley after volley fire. Is going to decimate the ranks of some of these troops. The Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia troops ultimately get pushed to the point where they have to redeploy, doing a basically a wheel, a movement that looks kind of like a door movement backward. As they move, they start to reload. But as they get charged by the British infantry, they're able to turn around and fire their muskets in mass into that oncoming British. Hey, ready? Take. Hey! Four! 